Committee with Critelli, the, uh, the lineup of projects for the athletics and recreation that you spearheaded. Um, there's an item on there that I keep getting a little hung up on, and it's the, um, the two fields at Cross Bar. I'm all for you know fixing fields and things like that, but uh, for two fields, uh, for new sod and irrigation, and from what I understand, there was these fields have been, and Eric, you might know this better. These fields have been redone already by TNM, and now we're doing them again. And I don't know if this is the second or third time. And this is a lot of money, and um, so I just, I guess, did the whole committee agree on all these projects? This is locked in. Locked Jay, in. can I jump in because I, I do have a lot of insight yeah. there. So over the last, this, last year and this year, the school has um, really limited what the teams can practice lacrosse field hockey soccer boys girls this year our youth football doesn't have any place to practice most likely they're going to end up across farms they will completely so i'll back up even just from last year see the one wonderful thing about cross farms they generally get a tuesday thursday and our clubs do a wonderful job keeping them off the game fields well when the school's using them they're using them every day twice a day they have been destroyed we have holes we've had more injuries this year knees ankles etc just because they've been overused so one of the problems is we don't have proper irrigation on one of the bigger fields so it burns out and just gets crusty so you need to build a little bit of infrastructure so we don't have to we have not spent a nickel there uh, over the last I, I can't tell you the last time we've done no field replacement in years at cross farms so this this would be and that's why we're waiting to the fall. We're going to see where football ends up. They might destroy it completely and you need to resod. Uh, but regardless, it, it's almost, a, so the two fields right now are almost unplayable. Okay. Because the sensitivity, Eric, and I know you're going to be sensitive to this point. You know where I'm going. The sensitivity is um, the Homedale Youth Soccer Association, senior people are here, uh, substantial beneficiaries of those fields. And it's expensive. Can I finish? Yeah. yeah okay. And the club is doing very well. The cash balance is over half a million dollars, cash and savings. I don't know exactly how that fits, filters out over the years, but it keeps growing. I guess I'm wondering why that keeps growing, but that's maybe none of my business. But why, why aren't they contributing? I know they've contributed nets in the past. I know they contribute to the overall athletics in town, and we're proud of the players. We have many friends on those teams and people that coach. But why in that four hundred thousand dollars plus for those two fields is there not some consideration maybe a hundred grand from hysa or something like that and, and have the other committee members considered that so the, the only thing i'll say to that is i've, I've been up here for this is my ninth year um and, and by the way i've coached football baseball basketball everything in town um for some reason there's this illusion that i've i've led a charge to be you know Bias soccer, not one nickel. I haven't seen one nickel from our taxpayers go to benefiting soccer in the last nine well, years. Respectively, we stopped a lot of major okay. projects you've driven. You know, time, that, time that, that, that might be the case, but at the end of the day, not one nickel has been spent. If it wasn't soccer. for us, there would be millions okay, spent. But not one nickel has been spent. Thank God for us. Well, maybe. maybe. <laughs> now, if you take pride in stopping children, that's No, good. I don't take pride in stopping children. I take pride in an organization that takes in $800,000 a year, is building a cash balance of half a million dollars a year, and we are spending $400,000 on fields that they will primarily benefit from. I'm not challenging it. I am simply asking, so has the committee considered this? So excuse me, Eric, please don't turn this around on me like you like to do. I am simply acknowledging that that club makes a lot of money, has a growing cash balance, and maybe it would be nice if they put some money toward this $400,000 for this special sod and new irrigation that they will substantially use. That's so, all I'm saying. Thank you. So Jay, I'll, uh, I'll take the initiative and speak to the yeah. Home Bell Football Association and see if they want to contribute some money towards these improvements and future improvements. Keep in mind that Detroit use also uses these fields. I, I know. The high school, the set, so it's, Okay. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll figure it out. Thank you. The other question is, of these projects, uh, how much, how many of these are going out to bid? Uh, I'll check with our infrastructure. Most of it in house. Otherwise, they all go. Okay, in house means T and M, I presume. No, it means Victor Stevens. Doing these major projects, the turf. Who's en who's doing this engineering for all these? Victor Stevens is. I'm not aware. Maybe ask Fran. Fran, are you overseeing a large part of the infrastructure? This 2.1 million. 
we are not lined up to do it at this moment. I would suggest that it does start with Victor Stevens and we get uh, called upon only if and when needed, if it's beyond his abilities to put the project together. That's my general understanding of it. Because our administrator, who's apparently on leave, um, said on the record that most of these will go out to bid. So I'm just curious if we're going to see a lot of these go out to bid. <clears throat> so yes, a lot will be going out to bid, and I will answer the TNM question for you. We have one uh, piece of this that I recall clearly that TNM needed to design and give us some pricing on was the new T-wall field, which is sitting out in the outfield. So that was, well, that's not a replacement of sod. It's not a replacement of infield. It's not canopies and things of that nature, but it's going to be newly designed, and they gave us some pricing for that. So okay. I can speak to that. Other than that, I don't believe TNM is going to be very involved in this process. Okay. Thank you. My final comment is just observation and suggestion, and I'm not going to point to anyone, but it's been readily apparent over many of the past meetings. I think if Homedale citizens want to come up here and make comments and make tough comments at certain committee members, even personal comments about them chewing gum and behavior, I'm okay with it and I want to hear what they have to say. However, if they are siblings of committee members on this committee and defending the positions of their brothers or sisters, attacking other committee members regularly in very tough form, I think it should be disclosed that my sister or brother is up here attacking someone else on the committee. I just think it would be nice for the public to know that a sibling is up here slaying for their brother against another committee member. Thank you. Anybody else? Jenny. Jenny Blumenthal, 41 Stony Brook Road. We received this code red list of the breakdown of all of the bits and pieces of this recreation plan today. My question is, where did these numbers come from? Are they pie in the sky numbers? Are they hard numbers? Are you going out to bid um, so that anything that was maybe 210,000 is all may come in at 100,000 or come in at 300,000? And do some of the other things, do the, some of the numbers or some of the smaller items seem rather high, do they include labor? or just the stuff? So it includes uh, a detailed effort by Victor Stevens and Bob Ward to get pricing from contractors, suppliers, both material and labor. Um, they are obviously still estimates, and we will keep a close eye on those actual numbers as they come in, but they are not high in the sky. They are actually, that's why it took so long to get it together. They needed to make sure that the numbers were as close to accurate as possible. Okay, so here we have two point something million dollars to spend on all this stuff. Is there any item in the budget for this year for maintenance? Because a lot of this stuff seems like maintenance that you should have been doing for the last 10 years, then this bond issue wouldn't have been so big because you wouldn't have needed to do it. You know, you all, you all of a sudden, if you don't mow the lawn on your, at your house, it's all going to suddenly cost you a whole bucket to fix your whole lawn, but if you mowed it every week for the last 10 years, you might not have to spend all this amount of money. Maintenance is in our operating budget, Jenny. <laughs> to the tune of what? I don't have the budget in front of me. So well, it I'm seems to me you're far more interested in buying all this new gold-plated stuff. I mean, remember, the half most of the world plays soccer on a, whole, on a field that may have potholes in it because they're playing in the street. Do we really need this gold-plated stuff yes, we when do. you haven't been maintaining it for 10 years? That's not true. We've been maintaining it. We've I been, haven't ever seen it in the budget. We've been talking That's about field improvements for okay. almost two years. Thank you for your Thanks time. Thanks Yeah. Anyone else? Kathy? Kathy Weber, Ford Duncan Drive. Um, I just want to make sure that this um, a couple of these things reflect what we originally said we would do, and, and if they don't, I just want to know why. <laughs> so Phillips Park, we, when this uh, press release came out, it said we'd have new batting cages at Phillips Park. I don't see any on this. I only see batting cages at Cross Farm. Did we decide we don't need them at Phillips now? We worked real closely with the uh, HMA baseball commissioners, and okay. they uh, the process has taken months and months, if not an entire year, of dialogue with them. Yeah, so they're, they're and, and they have, Oh, they've approved all of it. They've asked, okay, for, they've asked sure. for things to be taken out and other things okay. to be considered. 
okay? All right, and then um, my, my uh, never-ending passion, the swim club and tennis center. Um, as, as we all know, the um, tennis center is separate from the swim club, and in 2016, a lease was signed that apparently was never fully um, executed. My understanding is that legal action is resolved, correct? I apologize. Can you ask that one? Yeah, yeah, Scott. That, that was the Igor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes. The tennis lease? Yes. Yeah. 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 That litigation is resolved? Yeah, Township won a motion to dismiss on that. Okay, great. So, um, as a consequence of that, though, the tennis center itself was bulldozed. So there are no tennis courts. It was kind of done no matter what. I understand, but I'm just trying to understand. Yep. So we have a line item in here for $175,000 um, to clean up and rehabilitate the tennis center that has no tennis courts. So my only question is, what are the current plans for that property? And shouldn't we know what we're going to do with it before we spend $175,000 doing something to it uh, i.e., shouldn't we know whether we're going to make it into a grass field or into a building or a structure because that might dictate what we need to do to remedy that land? Does that make sense? Yes. The way you're presenting it makes some sense. Great. Where, so where do we know what we're going to do with it? No, we have no plans for any improvements to that area as far as structures go. We're going to clean it up. We're going to move everything out of it because it's an eyesore, and it's also a danger for kids that might so venture back there. So did we leave rubbish and trash there? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to refurbish it to a natural state. At this point, we have no plans this year to do anything up at the pool club or the tennis center. Okay, so it's one hundred and seventy-five thousand dollars to clean it up. My understanding. And plant grass seed? Like what does, what does refurbish it to a natural state? I believe it's just going to be grass. We're going to plant grass. We're plant grass, correct. And that's a holding pattern until we figure out what we're going to do with it. If we do anything. Correct. If we do anything. Yes. Okay. Thank you. I got confused, so I'm always afraid to say which one. Flip flops. Uh, I missed the memo. I got the memo. <laughs> Hi, Nancy Cagliostro, 214 Pebble Beach Court. Um, I want to start off with something positive because I've been here at the Township Committee meetings with uh, all the discussion with the Fire Department and brilliant guys um, where we're headed right now with this whole thing and I hope it continues down in that direction. Um, so I'd like to say something positive when it's appropriate. So everybody was involved in getting it to where it is. Thank you very much. The second one I don't expect any comments on based on Mr. Collins' comment in the beginning, but I do have a very strong position on something that I know is going on. And that's with the personnel in the township and the uh, issue going on. I don't think this issue is an evaluation of any township committee member. It is an evaluation of a wrongdoing of some personnel in the township. We reserve the uh our opinions of the township committee to election time not at an issue like this okay a township committee person in the position of these people have to operate with brains a heart and conscience conscience has integrity and fairness in it when they don't operate that way it's infect it, it's infectious and that's when a town spirals out of control Okay, because what concerns me is the watchdog of that behavior is part of this incident. An HR person should be making sure people follow the rules. And a, a head township administrator who's paid handsomely should not have a problem following the rules. And what I'm asking is that this township committee use everything in their power to admonish this correctly. And I can tell you what would happen in private sector, okay? but it's not for me to say this, but it has to be dealt with severely because that person sets the example for the town. Thank you. Anybody else in public? See no further comment? Just under the bell. Hey, Eric, you know my name's Scott. Uh, Scott Goldstein, 24 East Long Drive, uh, Home Um First, I'd like to uh, thank uh, the Home Environmental Commission for holding 
the seminar and for us to hear about the, the Rutgers study. Uh, I've taken the liberty to speak to both Mike and to uh, our township engineer, Fran, here, uh, regarding the, the maps that were provided in a PDF uh, in that study. When you zoom in to see the detail, it gets pixelated. So it's just a simple matter for the township to, to direct our town engineer to uh, provide that in a format that I can, we can actually blow it up. And Let me see if I can, I'll, I'll call Matt and see if we can get it in a different format. Yeah, that, that'd be great. Ursa Dano also okay. works uh, really well. Um, I'm really confused uh, about what went on tonight with the township administrator, and I like that an explanation. Did we did we suspend her for five days? Did we hire her back? That, that was of the administrator. The, the resolution the was on the human resources director. Scott, no action was taken as to the administrator. Okay. Um, and it's been two weeks, and the last time the attorney was here, they said they were 99% done, and they were waiting to interview one person. And in two weeks, we haven't made any progress. We can't comment on it. As I outlined earlier, it's a personnel matter. And at this meeting, the rice notices were not waived. So the committee met in executive session to discuss it. And uh, we apologize. But that is the reason why we were late getting down here. Um, I appreciate that. But this is just whether you make progress. This is not talking about any specifics other than whether you guys move the ball forward in two weeks. I, I, unfortunately, we can't answer. Normally, you know my MO is we can't talk about personnel, um, and now that we've discussed it executive, we can't discuss it uh, publicly here. Okay, so I assume that the uh, Zecta sessions were uh, recorded and that the transcripts at the appropriate time will be available? Mm -hmm. Executive sessions are not recorded, but the clerk does take minutes, um, and those are approved by the township. They're subject to OPRA, but they are not produced until the need for confidentiality no longer exists. Okay. Um, thank you. Thank you. Colin. I'm sorry, Brendan. Sharp 41 Sweet Briar Lane. I just wanted to, to say um, on behalf of, of really the sports organizations, HYA, uh, thank you for you guys pursuing the uh, recreation improvements. They are desperately needed. Um, I think it's going to benefit all of our kids. There's some other kids out of town benefit from it as well, so be it. Um, but I think it's a really great thing we're doing. It's been a long, <laughs> long road, I know. I've been a part of it for just a little bit, but uh, just want to say thank you. Keep up the good work, and uh, you know, we really appreciate it, and, and the members of HYA really appreciate it, too. So thank you. Thank you, Brendan. Thank you for all the volunteer time. Thank you. Ralph. Anyone have 30 seconds? Okay. Ralph. Blumenthal, 41 Stony Brook Road. Just following up on Scott's question with regard to the personnel matters. Uh, since there was a resolution, tonight that was adopted, extending or authorizing additional funding for, this, for the uh, outside council that was looking into these matters. I, I, is it fair to presume that the investigation is continuing with regard to at least the administrator? I, all, all I can say is that the resolution speaks for itself. Okay. Can Rob, we can't, we can't answer anything with personnel. You know that. You're an yes, expert. Yes and no. Okay. Is the investigation with, uh, complete with regard to the HR person? All I can say is we took an action tonight regarding the HR person, which speaks for itself. Thanks, Rob. Man Blue. Thank you. James Costello, 880 Home Del Road. Just want to second Mr. Sharp's voices. I want to say thank you to Mr. Hines, Mayor Hines, for everything you've done for the HYA and, the res and you know, everything that's going to go on in the future here. We're very thankful. I just want to thank, thank you to Mr. Sharp as well. From the sound of the majority home down that all once has passed, we say thank you. Thank you, Jim. Thank you. Terrence. Good evening, folks. Uh, Terrence Wall, uh, La Quinta Court, Homedale. I want to compliment all of you. I read the press release word for word today. It was thoughtful, coherent, collaborative, with so many different organizations. It's a fantastic first step, and it, it shows what a difference a month makes in working together and getting things done. Uh, I, don't think, I think it's you know, rounding first base, maybe going to second, there's a lot of work to do, but it was really encouraging to read 
uh, a thoughtful document that identified the data, identified the budget estimates, put the numbers out there that tied into the uh, ordinance amount. So I want to congratulate uh, Mayor Hines and the team and the Township Committee, all of you, for showing the community your commitment to working together, going beyond uh, the past, the nice thing about the past that it's over, and looking forward to a brighter future for all the folks that are in here. So I just want to say thank you for that as a lifelong resident of Homedale. Uh, I also want to congratulate you and applaud uh, taking the political clause out of administrative roles and positions by stripping away the ability uh, of elected officials to look at pensioning out and maxing out their PERS at a three-year cap uh, when they're doing positions that are of elected official nature. So I think that's great. I think you have, by the way, I'm here as a resident, not as a member of the Board of Ed. I applaud adding Board of Ed. I think that's fantastic as well. I think the administrative position is extremely important. It needs to be a nonpartisan spot. That individual works for the taxpayers who you're elected to serve as well. So by stripping out that, that element and giving it a pause, I think that that's really great and I would encourage you to move forward with that. The last thing, I'm assuming the chief at some point in the very near future, based on the pattern of discipline that he just extended to one of the individuals that was investigated, uh, my assumption is unless there's something uh, dramatic that will be seeing your administrator back in the role when you did a five day suspension to, to I'm assuming you complete that particular element of the investigation. So I'm looking forward to having the people that are paid to work for the taxpayers physically showing up at the building, particularly when you're doing collective bargaining, MOA agreements with your PBA, and other critically important things that a department head, an administrator, has to do with 14 to 16 departments. This is not a three-card monte with personalities and opinions. So I would ask Sean Keane to wrap it up. It's their money, it's our money, and it's really important that we get back to work. And I thought that release, uh, excuse me, that release you sent out today was right on the money. Congratulations, great stuff. Look forward to more collaborative uh, ventures moving forward for everyone who you thank, all work for. Thank, thank you, Tom. Thank you. Is it? Debbie Room, 15 Cindy Lane. Um, my question is regarding the new ordinance about elected officials, which I'm also thrilled about. Um, does that include if there, if our chief gets tired and there's need for a temporary interim admin, is that included? My interpretation would be yes. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Anyone else from the public? Seeing no one else, motion to adjourn. Moved.